10 weeks out from the Tampa Pro. Welcome back, everyone. And this week, we make some pulling of body weight and feeling really good. Also take you through a day of eating and a pull session. Updates for the week, hit a body weight low, 227.0 on the dot today. <clears throat> this was, you know, coming from my, my last update of like doing a deload and a diet break. Coming back from that, I just assessed and ended up feeling pretty good. So made a, a food reduction to about, um, which we'll see today. It's pretty close to 2,600 calories and off day was around 2,100 calories. So all in all pulled about 250 calories on average out. Also made a cardio adjustment. Moving that through the week, body weight's just been trending down and feeling good. See off my visuals, uh, they're tighter this week. Uh, have still like good fullness and roundness. Training's been going well too. So ticking off all the boxes. Visually, you know, I'm seeing a little bit more out of my back shot, my glutes, and what I'm really seeing is more in the, the front shot too. Like quads keep getting more detailed. Also not as just kind of inflamed from doing uh, cardio. Overall, like it's been a productive week. Some adjustments made on the stack design, PD stack design as well around this like 10 week out mark, need to start making considerations around water versus fat. And that's when there was reductions of testosterone and additions in to replace that with non-aromatizing compounds to offset some of the water that could be driven around that. Um, e even when you are using like an ARB and offsetting estrogen with non-aromatizing androgens, even with all that, there's so much input that it could be present. And so around this point, it can be more noticeable than it is in the off season. So you want to have an accurate assessment as you get into these later stages of prep. And that's when we should make these changes around stack design. Because if you make an adjustment now, especially if you're using some type of ester like enanthate or cypionate, that's going to take four to five weeks to reach a stable serum level. So then you're talking, you're now five weeks out. If you're making your adjustments at five weeks out, that won't be seen to you're like, two weeks out, one week out, making those adjustments now. And I, that's one thing I have noticed in myself is that as I get leaner, I start noticing more of water related issues. Not that it's problematic, but it just blurs the assessment and that's what you don't want on prep. So one way to, to address it is adjusting the stack design. So anyway, we'll jump into the rest of the day, follow some meals along and a pull session and go from there. So meal one, <clears throat> we have 250 grams of egg white, 50 grams of spinach, and there is 50 grams of asparagus in there well, as well, using uh, also Cholula honey, ha sweet habanero in there. Then I've shifted to doing, this is um, oat flour, or just oat powder, uh, 40 grams with some baking powder. It turns into like, looks like mashed potatoes almost. I haven't mixed it in fully. 35 grams of blueberries, and then 15 grams of animal whey, and that cinnamon bun. So mix that all up and creates pretty voluminous for just being 40 grams of oats. Then I do have uh, an extreme wellness fiber tortilla with some peach, sugar-free peach jam on it. So this all has shifted this meal to be pretty relatively high in fiber, great for lowering appetite. So for <clears throat> the diet adjustments that I did make, primarily just lowered carbohydrates. So pulled about 50 grams of carbs off my train days and off days. So today's train day, it's 2,675 calories, 300 grams of protein, 260 grams of carbs, 48 grams of fat. Now this is counting macros and everything. So everything's weighed, um, everything is accounted for within this. And meal one is 357, gram, uh, 357 calories, 46 grams of protein, 36 grams of carbs, and three grams of fat. So relatively low fat in this meal. Fiber is pretty high. So it, it definitely is more satiating to start the day and Basically, I pulled carbohydrate from where it could be the most tolerated, which within this meal, I actually shifted some carbohydrate into a little bit more fibrous sources. Like if you look back at some of the earlier videos, I was doing like a bagel with this meal, which is very, very low fiber, um, the drier carbohydrate, so it's low volume. So now we're moving into like, for one, a fiber tortilla, which uh, 15 grams of those carbs is 11 grams of fiber. Um, some would argue don't count the fiber calories, but they, they still are contributory. So there is a, a shift not only in lower, lower carbohydrate, 
but also into fiber sources of those carbohydrates. For one, keep digestion working well, also manage hunger better, but also those fiber calories, they won't be metabolized the same. So there's a little bit greater of a shift than the actual 50 gram carb drop because some fiber uh, increased within that. So this was a meal one set up and we'll go throughout the day and just keep, keep showing the different changes and hunger management strategies that making for um, this diet. So after meal one, I get to work and sit at the workstation here, which you can see my current setup for what I look out into my office and got a few projects coming on. I'll give you some sneak peeks of behind the scenes of J3U. So um, currently working on, and I don't know if you, you can see this, is why am I retaining water? And so one thing that's in the nutrition section for J3U, or I should say what's not, is a hydration and electrolyte lecture. So this is going to cover resolving issues around um, fluid balance and why things happen, uh, managing sodium, potassium, also like fully all, all the other electrolytes covering, you know, magnesium, chloride, and getting into vitamins and minerals too. So we don't have those. So I am going through and redoing some lectures. I've also fully reshot module one. So it's going to have more, more focus around the coaching process. So like doing client check-ins, improving athlete communication, um, what you do. So if you have level one, you, you're going to get access to that. If you don't have level one, you're in for a treat. Um, also, bigger sneak peek is, if you can see this, is level two. Level two will be coming. Luke and I are working on this. This will be a, for one, kind of business focused around J3U. Also, like, for creative content, marketing, building the business size, side of online coaching. Then the next step from J3U level one, which is kind of a, a theoretical with some practical, is actually getting into case study work. So I am logging client case studies. And what you'll have is assignment to clients and follow along the way and make decisions and have to answer questions and uh, make the calls for these clients and take them to stage, take them through off season. So it'll be a direct look at the coaching process and making sure that you know what you're doing in level two, which from there you'll receive an actual certification with credentialized that you can put behind your name. So a little sneak peek of things, things to come, the background of what I'm working on. Okay. So about to go walking before meal two, which is the pre-workout meal, but do some chicken cooking. This is my go-to method for cooking chicken. Use Instapot, 385 for 18 minutes. And we have butterfly chicken breast. And the seasoning of choice is McCormick Smokehouse Maple. And that's the that's all I do for my chicken. And have that cooking, go walk, and go over meal two. So cardio change since coming off the deload diet break, which I feel great now, um, is the cardio itself. I'm not doing cardio. And this has happened in the past preps where the that shorter time duration and higher efforts, man, it, it really starts digging into my, for one, localized leg fatigue. Legs just feel like concrete heavy all day. And also just mentally having to like start digging harder to get heart rate up. And I have the time availability to do long duration, low intensity cardio for the same calorie expenditure. So that's why my step count is now between 15 to 16,000 steps a day, instead of being where it was at for 10,000 steps. So basically for that 25 minutes um, on the spin bike, which was burning, you can calculate this stuff, you know, it was burning pretty close to 260, 250 calories. I'll burn that walking a little bit over two miles, which is about 4,500 steps. So I just rounded it to 5,000 steps, push it up a little bit more. So 15,000 steps a day, easy doable. My legs feel great. They're light, just walking. So basically in bodybuilding, we are looking to create the energy deficit through the least fatiguing means possible that doesn't interfere with resistance training. That is the goal. So you don't have to necessarily do cardio. I think having a few days in are, is great, but the later stages of prep, it's okay to shift it more towards steps for the end outcome of what you're trying to do. Now, for off-season being enhanced, 
Highly recommend cardio the whole the whole time. Um, absolutely. But that's one shift that has happened this past week that's been very beneficial. The other thing that I've adopted <laughs> is I know I won't even say it because I know in the U in the UK in Australia they hate what we call these in America. <laughs> I think they call them bum packs there, or maybe an ass pack, a booty pack. I don't know. But if you wear it in the front, what do you call it? Bulge pack? <laughs> I don't know, but it's extremely convenient. I always thought, oh, those look so stupid. Um, but man, now that I have one, it's the best thing ever. Cause I go walking, my phone in my pocket, and like it's swinging around. And so now I have like everything like quickly accessible on hand. Adopt the bum or bulge pack, give it a try. Okay, meal number two. So this is my pre-workout meal. Eat this, then drive about 30 minutes to the gym. So this is 70 grams of actual oats, not oat flour, and 50 grams of animal whey. Again, cinnamon bun is the go-to. And then 30 grams of pumpkin, and just has some cinnamon and salt in it. So this is 454 calories, 46 grams of protein, 53 grams of carbs, six grams of fat. So still keeping the fats relatively pretty low in these meals. All right, so we have pull session day. This is the pull before legs. So mainly chest race uh, rowing patterns, doing a pull down, upper back row, a lat row, then get in some bicep or delt work and shrug. Start with the nautilus pull down, three sets here, eight to 12 reps, going single arm. Start with the left arm that's the, the more troublesome side and then hit the right right arm as the, the last set. So moving on to the prime extreme row for upper back movement, still doing three sets on these. And, and how I build up on these is just first sets like five reps, add a couple plates, then just doubles down to my last set before I hit my work set is a single. So I'm trying to spare, conserve all my energy just to put into these top sets. Don't waste energy. Like if you, I'm relatively already warm from the first exercise where I do some extra reps. So these other sets are just feeder sets triples, doubles, singles, just getting up to the load that I'm gonna put everything into. I feel, uh, feel good today, I feel strong. So doing three sets on these movements, my preference, and really we're talking, if you're within the hypertrophy rep range, you're in training at that high effort level, like we're taking these sets there, you know? But with that being said, the reps are, are relatively not as important. And whether you want to say, say you're working a rep range of eight to 12, do your set 12 first, then let the reps drop or um, start with a set of eight and then decrease load to stay up in the rep range. And that's my preference. I like to hit the top set, something heavier, and then let the load drop and stay up in the higher rep range towards the back, the later sets. Not quite a right, right or wrong way to do it. I think it's more exercise based. Some stuff feels better doing a high rep set first. Um, also, you might have days where you feel a little bit more beat up, do start with a higher rep set. Um, so it's more of a tool, how you want to use these, but for the majority part, you need to be consistent. So you can gauge this across session to session to make sure your logbook is a diagnostic tool and you can see if you're training with appropriate volume and recovering and making progressions.
So the single arm hammer strength, lat base row. I like this one, you do just have to angle yourself out a little bit. I realized watching my video that I'm still a little too straight on. So that's why you do video review and record your sets, not for Instagram, but for yourself. So you can critique your own form and learn to get better. That's why we're recording all this stuff. That's why I carry around a tripod. It's, it's for you. So don't worry about how you look filming your own sets. Just do your thing to make sure you're achieving your own goals here. Uh, moving on to rear delt, then bicep, then shrug, then back to a bicep. So alternate like that so we can give some relief to some of the trap before hitting shrugs. And then also for same with biceps. Do a bicep, do another exercise, let the biceps recover a bit. Then you can hit, hit your uh, next bicep from there. Order based on need from there too. Hitting a cable curl behind the back with my wrist cuff on because I have some medial epicondylitis, also known as golfer's elbow. It's actually getting better. It's, the curls were really bothering it. Also, just all the rowing too. So like cueing wrist extension as you're rowing instead of like trying to always arm wrestle the, the, the row movements. Also, just have to get some relief from my wrist flexors and not use them basically. So the, the wrist cuff works excellent to do so. Um, doing three sets on this cable curl, that two sets of uh, hammer curls as well. So two sets on my my shrug pattern it's really more like a, kind of a trap row so i stay in some a little bit of thoracic flexion with a little bit of hip hinge going on you can just really get a little bit more protraction at the bottom and you know some people might give you shit for like having a little bit of cervical flexion but uh man try to keep a neutral spine that's the at least the idea of it driving almost like a like a row pattern really so you get a, uh, a better range of like standing upright and just cueing like shoulders to ears and really hitting more of your like really peak upper fibers and your sternocorda mastoid. Um, so it can actually get more of this kind of upper mid trap area doing them that way. It's what I have found adjustment wise that has worked well. All right, so on the hammer curls, I do them on an inclined bench so I can adjust how much let off I get on these. And for a hammer curl, I want loading more lengthen and let off towards the top so I can accomplish that pretty close with that angle against my second bicep, call it my bicep exercise. So like in the shortened phase, that's gonna be a little bit more fatigued already since I've already did a bicep movement. So now if I can preferentially load lengthen, get a little bit more out of it and also in, an, in a hammer curl type pattern where normally if you're doing like a dumbbell, it's standing, it loads very heavy, short, hard, hard to get, finish it up at the end. It's like basically not loading on the bottom. So this changes the profile, makes it pretty ideal. That wraps up the pool session. Solid session day, like felt strong, good energy. So we'll uh, get in the car and hit the post-workout meal. Back home from the gym, getting another walk-in before meal four. If you wonder how I get in, 15,000 steps per day, which I basically work at the computer otherwise, which if I, if I didn't intentionally go walking, I'd 
We get around 3,000, maybe 4,000 steps a day. So my routine is first thing morning, I do fast for a bit. And then for my morning walk, I will go, and I will roughly get in from my morning walk and moving around about 6,000 steps. Then before that meal too, I'll take a 15 to 20 minute walk. And every 10 minutes walking is about 1,000 steps, just so you know, depending on your pace, of course. So that'll get me up to around 10,000 steps, 9,000 steps-ish, something like that. In the gym, I'll walk around between sets. Nothing vigorous, just some light pacing. Usually can get another 2,500, sometimes 3,000 steps in the gym. I'll take this walk and this will be a 20 minute walk. And then usually by the end of the night, I might have before meal five, Renee and I will take just a kind of a later evening walk and get in. Sometimes we have like 1500 steps left or something. So it just kind of spreads them out throughout the day. And that's how we fit in the steps. Meal number four, I don't have everything fully prepped because I eat my salad and my chicken first. It's 170 grams of chicken breast cooked weight, 200 grams of lettuce. Then we also have about a, a it's right at like 100 grams of tomato, onion, and banana pepper. And you mix in that salt and pepper, Dijon mustard, and also awesome stuff, Jihu's Polynesian sauce. So that is my dressing combo. I eat that with a La Banderita <laughs> fiber tortilla. And then I come back to the kitchen and then I grab my 200 grams of strawberries. And then I'll also have three rice cakes and 15 grams of peanut butter. And eat those and usually have some hot tea with that too. So this is when hunger is usually getting the highest. And so this is actually one of my higher calorie meals. It's 637 calories, 68 grams of protein, 56 grams of carbs and 16 grams of fat. So Renee and I will have our salad meal, we'll sit on the couch and watch some kind of show tonight. I don't know what we have planned, but this is my second to last meal for the night. Last meal of the night, I made it from meal four to meal five. Quite uncomfortable with hunger and being in your own skin, which is great because on prep, when you're uncomfortable, that's when change happens. So if your prep's all cakewalk and you feel great all the time, maybe not, might not be getting contest shape. So anyway, meal five, it's always a favorite. We have one, just a frozen protein smoothie. So this is 200 mils of unsweetened almond milk. Key, 30 grams of cookies and cream, animal whey, and also some decaf instant coffee. If you like cookies, if you like coffee, this is money. Get your animal whey, code J310. <laughs> then also I do brownie that I've been doing forever. 40 grams of oats, 30 grams of pumpkin, some baking powder, and 20 grams of chocolate, uh, brownie batter, animal whey, and then a 20 grams of uh, rice and grinds there, or pride foods, um, almond butter. So that's a meal, 587 calories, 62 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, and 17 grams of fat. And side note, the movie of the night was on Netflix, it was missing, it was excellent. It would, Highly recommend checking it out. By the way, appreciate everyone tuning in, following this prep series along. I will talk to you next week.